try this. I have no idea where I'm streaming right now. Hopefully I'm streaming on YouTube. Okay. What is up, Copy Squad? It's your boy, Kyle Milligan, coming to you live from Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we're going to talk about how to be more creative in writing. And today, I'm going live via YouTube instead of Facebook Live because Facebook's having some sort of weird down issue, like uh, it's just not operating or working for some reason. I'm not sure if I can still get chat in this. Yes, I can. There's a little chat box right there. So I don't know if anyone's going to tune into this because it's on YouTube instead of Facebook. But this question comes from a reader who was interested in learning more about creativity itself. He said, we've done videos about how to create like an idea, but how to be more creative is like another thing he wants me to like specifically address. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share this YouTube live link so that other people can join in because they're probably expecting me on Facebook and have no idea this thing is down. Mitch says, hey, Kyle, Mitch here. What up, Mitch? How's it going? I'm going to share this link really quick to my Facebook page uh, because Facebook is janky today. Facebook Live is down. Tune into YouTube Live now. All right, cool. What's up, folks? Let me know if you can hear me and everything in the comments good to have people on the uh youtube thingy and this thumbnail is the same thumbnail uh damn it it's the same crappy thumbnail from before well it's not a crappy thumbnail but it's the wrong thumbnail well i can't even post the link on facebook so that's just it is what it is all right guys thanks for being here um okay so speaking to creativity and basically creativity is like i think what we're talking about here in creativity versus ideas what we're going to be talking about is coming up with an the process of coming up with an idea is creativity like if i had to separate the two words so an idea is the result and creativity is like the formula or the process like how do i come up with weird stuff so i've done a, a video on ideas before and i've also done an, a video with james altucher which i can link here Ping! for people who are watching on youtube later and this is going to link you to my james altucher video where he talks about coming up with 10 ideas a day and he was actually uh one of the first adopters of new easy safe and big he's one of the first people i told about and he really loved that idea that there's four big selling emotions and he bought in he put it on his twitter he put it on facebook but i talk about those big four emotions new easy safe and big and these are the most important sales emotions that exist there uh, i talk about that inside my book it's called take their money it's available at kylethewriter.com forward slash book so the creative process. So basically, uh, when me and James talked about ideas, he talked about like flexing your idea muscle a lot and basically coming up with 10 ideas every day because whenever you come up with 10 ideas a day, you basically get practice at coming up with ideas. The coming up with ideas is the creative element of it. And basically what I would say about being more creative, let me tell you a quick story, just to kind of put it in perspective. When I worked in sales, there was this one guy Keenan, I can say his name because I don't think anybody knows who I'm talking about. This one guy, Keenan. And Keenan always had like clever stuff to say. He's a very creative dude. He always say weird, wacky stuff that I, I can't even like recall it because it was so different and unique that it didn't stick. It just whenever he said it, I'd be like, what? And it was always like a weird sort of like folky way. It almost sounded like everything he said was like grandpa wisdom. It was like some sort of line of wisdom like every time he opened his mouth. And I thought that was like the most creative dude I had ever met and he drew he drew at his desk a lot too uh really elaborate little designs he just seemed like an overall creative guy and then i remember once i left the country and went to ireland right and then i heard one of those weird expressions right in ireland and it turns out that weird expression that was super unique and creative to me was just an expression in ireland sort of like if i said um, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush and you had never heard that before and you'd be like wow that's incredible. It's so creative. Where'd you come up with that? So I say all this to make the point that I think creativity is a bit of a myth. And basically, ideas, the idea generating process, the creativity element of it is just having a plethora of raw materials in your brain. So I think I, it's almost like safe to say there are no unique ideas. 
There are no original thoughts. Everything that you think, all your creativity is generally an amalgamation of the experiences that you've had, the things that you've read, and the things that you've seen. Which is why I am a huge, huge believer in this basically read constantly philosophy. And when I say read constantly, I'd never encourage you to read about like copywriting theory as much as reading like actual copywriting. Because what makes you more creative on the fly when you're writing copy is the daily practice of reading copy. The theory behind why it works and what makes it work doesn't stimulate new copywriting ideas for me per se. But if I see another writer execute it, and then all of a sudden, like, hey, I could have done that same sort of thing from my own writing, then all of a sudden I'm creative when I apply it to my specific and unique subject. But that original idea wasn't necessarily my idea. It was an experience that I had that I was able to adapt and mold to this specific instance. So there is a book called A Technique for Producing Ideas, and it's like, I think it's like a 20-page book. Highly recommend that book. It's like a little, it's like a brochure more than a book, but it just gives you like, uh, I think five steps, maybe four steps to creating an idea. And it's basically gather a bunch of raw materials and then like study it to death and then unconscious processing. So you got like gather the raw materials is read a bunch of stuff. And then like conscious processing is thinking about it, trying to connect dots and relationships. And then step three is like, forget about it. I'm, re I'm, this is off the top of my head. I could be a little bit off, but this is basically it. Then the third step, unconscious processing. So you do conscious processing and then unconscious processing. And that's basically forget about it. Walk away. Go. It's like one of those classic shower epiphanies where you're just like, oh, snap. Or you wake up in the middle of the night and it just comes to you. And that's the unconscious processing of it where all this stuff is kind of floating around in your head. New information is coming in all the time because you should be reading pretty regularly. And then you will unconsciously, almost accidentally, draw the connection. Right? And then that'll be like your eureka moment, which would be like step four. Holy snap, I need to write this down. And what makes this so powerful? What makes it all work? What makes a person creative are these plethora of experiences. So I've got some cool things I can tell you about experiences making you more creative right now. So my Ireland example, like was that guy more creative? Was Keenan actually very creative? Or had he been more well-traveled than me? Has he just heard more expressions than I had heard? So whenever he whenever he said them to me, it was new and unique and novel to me, and it struck me. It was striking and creative, and I was like, oh, that's cool, man. I think that's really neat that you can talk, talk like that, I guess. But maybe it just had to do with the fact that he was like a military family guy, and his family had been to like Germany and um, different parts of the world, like Europe, and he had just heard things I had never heard before, right? So all of a sudden, is he really that... Is he really that eccentric and creative, or has he just been to other places? So he says things that are different. He's had more experiences than me, so his experiences seem new and novel to me. So you can create that new and novel experience, right? New, easy, safe, and big. A number one emotion that you must trigger. If you want to learn how to trigger this, check out my book, Take Their Money, at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. Please type that in the comments for me too, YouTube viewers. But yeah, if you want to create that new experience, you have to bring in a lot more raw materials and then you can create connections you can draw lines to things that seem unrelated and then create a big new experience for someone else and that's what creativity is in my opinion creativity is just a wealth of experiences that you are able to express your unique way and what makes it unique well you expressed it your experiences will be different than everybody else's experiences. They'll be colored by your dispositions and your belief systems and all sorts of different things that are unique to you. So they are all, they can be inherently new. Um, as far as coming up with ideas, again, I think it doesn't really ex – like I think in a way we don't come up with anything. Just like I say, we don't really write the copy. The copy is in the research, right? We don't figure out – like we don't – we aren't geniuses. I don't consider myself a genius. I don't consider myself very clever. My ideas generally come from scouring the news, seeing what's top of mind, and then figuring out how quickly can I draw, what weird line can I draw from this thing at the top of the Fox News thing or whatever, like whatever's at the top of like conservative media because my target audience is older white gentlemen who are conservative. What can I draw from the top of the Fox News headlines to something about the financial markets? How quickly and weirdly can I draw the connection? And that's my idea. And it isn't like some grand big idea to anybody but people who haven't been reading the news and the financial markets at the same time and didn't see that connection at first. 
I only had it, not because I'm clever or brilliant, I just picked two things, and I drew the line. And that is creativity in a nutshell. And I hate to demystify it and make it less magical, um, but I really do think that it is a process that you can practice. That's James Altucher's big thing, too. Um, James says, you know, that you flex your idea muscle by doing 10 ideas a day, right? So, I mean, again, it's the same concept where if you get more practice at drawing connections, if you consume more content, like it'd be, okay, here's one of the daunting things about 10 ideas a day. People are like, wow, 10 ideas, how am I supposed to come up with all that stuff? Well, you got to think, like, James is kind of a nerd. He reads a lot. So it's a lot easier for him because he has raw materials. Maybe this is a privilege that he isn't aware of that he has over the common man because he's a big consumer, man. He reads a lot. He's a smart dude. So the more you read, the more raw materials are in your brain. You know, knowledge is power. This is my tripod for my phone. I tried to go live on my phone because my Facebook on my laptop wouldn't work, but it turns out the whole thing's just down today. I saw it in the news, actually. Instagram's down, too. It's crazy. Um, that's why I'm just waving it around. But yeah, the uh, the whole thing, I'm going to tell you one cool thing. All right, I got, all right, I got two cool things to tell you now. I'm going to forget because I, I never put notepad in front of me to write these down. It's Antonio Damasio. I'm just going to go into it because I always forget. Antonio Damasio is the neuroscientist who discovered that decisions are made at the emotional center of the brain. Now, before you tune out because you think I've said this before, I haven't said this before. This is new. Um, so in my sales letter, I make the argument that the reason you need new, easy, safe, and big, which is kind of like what I sell, right? You have to speak to the emotions of new, easy, safe, and big, and you can sell pretty much anything. It was Antonio Damasio who discovered through his patient who had a brain tumor that when his emotional center of his brain got damaged, his decision-making center of his brain was damaged. That's what he discovered. So, oh, you can't make decisions without emotion. So the point is you have to speak to emotions to make sales. And this was called like the somatic, the somatic hypothesis or something like that. Then this is the cool line that I, I read out of that in my research. But I didn't have anywhere for it in my sales letter or in my pitch. But it was a really cool line that stuck with me. And the idea is that our wisdom, the idea of wisdom is not actually knowledge. It's emotion. And here's how that works. Wisdom comes from a somatic and the somatic experience is like just like an experience that you – it's like an emotional experience is the way I understand it, right? So the more emotional experiences you have, then you have more things to tie like yes or no's. Like you understand those things through the emotional reaction that you had. And wisdom, the word wisdom is really just having a ton of emotional experiences so you can think about things from tons of different emotional perspectives. And then you can kind of decide – upon like what is a wise course what is a smart safe or something like that kind of course so wisdom is not actually about accruing knowledge it is a is it about accruing experiences and the experiences trigger emotions and the emotional reaction that you uh, that you incur and you remember tell you what things are good in life what things are rewarding and positive and what things will ultimately lead to a bad outcome what things will ultimately hurt you and, and make you sad or, or take all your money and leave you broke and, uh, or, or make you like uh, feel regret, right? And it's all triggered. These, this wisdom, this knowledge, which seems logical on the surface, seems rational, seems like, oh, I just know everything so I'm wise. You know? That's like your technical – like your, your total like book smarts nerd guy who thinks he's a know-it-all but everyone thinks he's a total jackass, right? But then you've got this wise old dude who's never read a book. Now, he probably has read some books, but he just seems to know about life. He's got street smarts and that kind of stuff. And it comes down to actual emotion over knowledge, over traditional knowledge of reading books because this person has experienced more. That's why someone can be wise beyond their years, especially people who've had like rough childhoods or, or maybe like broken families. They come up and they don't seem like children, dude. Age like 16, 17, 18, they seem like they, they can make some real decisions. And it's probably because they might have had some times in their life where they had to make like real adult decisions. And that experience that they had early on, it's wisdom. That emotional um, reaction that they felt stuck with them. So it's kind of cool and crazy that the emotional center of your brain is where you make decisions. And it is also where wisdom is theorized to come from. It comes from the emotion, not the knowledge. How crazy is that, right? Um, again, if you want to learn how to speak to the emotional brain, 
That's what copywriting allows you to do. Copywriting is a professional language that bypasses the logical brain that just talks about facts and figures and makes no impact in your life, really. Like, I can't sell you on something because I have a good argument. Like, you see this in debates all the time. They got their whole fact sheet, they know their position, and they just go back and forth, pitter-patter, pitter-patter, my facts this, my statistics that. And at the end, whoever you're rooting for, you just say was the winner. It doesn't, it doesn't change anybody's minds. What changes people's minds? What moves people? to action, what compels them to do things, to buy things, the emotional center of the brain. Nobody teaches you how to speak to it, but you can learn from my book called Take Their Money at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. It'll teach you the language of copywriting, and the language of copywriting bypasses all this logical BS, goes straight to the emotional center of the brain. I think in my camera I see something that I Okay, I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> Right there, Grandpa Kurt is in that vent right there. <laughs> just noticed there's a Grandpa Kurt doll in that vent. I don't know if anyone else spotted that, but uh, I'm in the basement of uh, Agora Financial. I don't, oh, I have to actually, uh, I think I might have to start tapering uh, how much I use the company in my videos. I'll, I gotta be a little bit wiser about that. All right, um, any questions about this uh, topic, about being creative? I can kind of wrap this up a little bit. Um, so, Essentially, I think creativity is kind of like a myth. It's a practice, okay? That's why I, um, oh, I'll give you another link. Uh, let me see, this side, right? Yeah, boom! There's gonna be a link to three daily exercises that you can do to improve your copywriting skill. And it's these daily exercises that flex your creativity muscles that make you able to think on your feet and speak the language of copywriting. Uh, just real quick, read a piece of copy, write a piece of copy, and come up with an idea a day. I go into it in more depth in that video. If you do this every day, it will give you more experiences. Once you acquire more experiences, you will be wiser, okay? And once you're wiser, you can think on your feet. People are clever or like witty or all that. It's just because they have like more experiences. They're more comfortable. That's why like the first time I went live, right? Oh, you're so good on camera maybe. Or like the first time I got on phone sales and uh, a new person was like, wow, you're so good on the phones. Dude, no. I was terrible on the phones when I started. I was I was nervous and sweating bullets when I went live for the first time. It was through a set of experiences. Like I have over a hundred videos at this point. Now, through my experiences, all the different emotions I've gone through, it's kind of become like a baseline and I've just become a little more wise on camera. I'm a lot more adept at doing these things and that's from experiences. And again, uh, creativity, Creativity is a result of practice. However you want to do that, you can come up with 10 ideas a day like James said in the video I linked earlier. You can do the three daily practices that I offer you in the other video I linked earlier. Um, and basically all it is, you want to try to immerse yourself. Like sure, take in as much raw knowledge and data as possible and you'll be able to draw those lines. But it's also about experiences. Experience as much as possible. And however you do that. And that could mean like stepping outside of like your echo chamber from time to time. Um, I used to, I do still follow some people that I just absolutely disagree with on a lot of their life stances and what they promote and support. Just sometimes to get like a completely different perspective on some issues that I might sometimes feel strongly about. But um, yeah, it just, you kind of have to open up your, your world experience or your world knowledge or you'll just be like another... Uh, I'm a boring person. You'll be a boro. All right, that's all I've got for you today, Copy Squad. I don't see any comments or anything coming through. I will hang out for just a second because I know these are super delayed. Um, I'll give it a little bit. By the way, if you want to learn how to speak to the emotional brain... Oh, wait, I had one other cool thing I wanted to talk about. Hmm. I guess I could talk about it a little bit. Um, so I'm recording videos about my new sales letter. So take their money sales page. I've been talking about this. I'm, my designer is helping me make it look professional and pretty. Um, and take their letter or take their take their money sales letter will be up probably by the end of this week. What's today? Wednesday. So probably by like Friday, I hope. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically hold your hand through writing that sales letter. And this is again one of those things that through all my experience through writing several sales letters and having a bunch of different angles and reading so many sales letters. That's what I'm kind of getting at. The experience of reading all these different sales letters and acquiring all that knowledge has really helped me to be a lot more adept and going straight for what works and writing my own sales letters. So what I've done is I've got every single draft of every of that sales letter that I wrote 
and I'm going to record videos showing you, walking you through. And I'm talking about this slices off the learning curve because I'm going to basically, instead of you reading about uh, how to write a sales letter, et cetera, et cetera, I'm basically going to show you, here I am writing a sales letter, and this is the things, the pitfalls to avoid, and why you should start writing like this, and why I wrote this part like that. Um, so that's going to be a product. That's going to be coming out as like a entire like video series. And I think it might be like 15 videos long where I basically start like, here's the headline. Here's why I wrote this headline. Here's why I deleted this headline. And then I came up with, I came up with four headlines for this. Here's the lead. Here's how I started the lead, wrote the lead, blah, blah, blah. And then on and on and on. I'm going to show you step by step the whole process. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in something like that, please let me know in the comments. I do want to try to gauge interest. Um, I also want to know like what I should be including in these videos while I record them, what's most important to you. I know a lot of people ask me how to write a lead, how to write an offer, how to write the body copy. I'm just going to show you in one package. I'm going to do one product. It's going to walk you from start to finish through that. Um, and I think what's going to be really cool about that is you'll see the final product at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. And I think it should be like by this Friday or Saturday, you should be seeing the sales letter. I'm going to teach you how to write. And that, I think, is really exciting. It's exciting to me. I think it's cool. I'm a nerd, though. So that's all I've got for today, Copy Squad. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go to kylewriter.com forward slash book. If you're interested in checking out my book, Take Their Money. It'll teach you the secret language of copywriting. Speak directly to the emotional brain. Peace out, Copy Squad.